with Tom Fairman. So Tom, if you could join us. Ah, yes, it's working. Hey, bonjour, hello. We hear you. Welcome, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, can you share your screen? Certainly. We see your screen. You can start. Here okay. we go. Everything is perfect. Uh, the stage is yours. Lovely. Thank you, Arno. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Fairman. I'm a distinguished engineer at a company called Solis. Uh, I, uh, this is a bit of a last minute presentation. Um, there's been a dropout uh, that I've kind of filled the, sp uh, the spot. So this is kind of a slightly different subject to API identity and security. I'm going to be talking about um, event, event driven architectures and the kind of an event enabling the API economy. So um, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Um, so just to kind of talk through what I'm going to be talking about today, we'll start off with kind of a bit of preaching to the converted. So, um, you know, APIs are great. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why they're great um, and then some of the reasons why sometimes they're not so great. So we have excellent tooling. We understand how to use them, but we've got some complexities around this idea of synchronous versus asynchronous interactions, what effect they have on the user experience, what kind of load profiles they create. And the, effects on the um, kind of developer and API agility. And I've got a nice little use case that I'm going to use to kind of illustrate some of these points. And what that leads me to really is this idea of APIs and an event-driven architecture working together being kind of the ideal case, uh, uh, the kind of uh, brilliant architectural pattern that you could use to build your um, API-led approach with the advantages of event-driven architectures kind of backing that. And then that's going to lead on to another point. And you may have heard this, but actually deploying and using event-driven architectures can be really hard. One of the reasons why it's hard is that we're lacking in this space some of the great things about the API space, and one of those is tooling. And that's going to lead me on to this idea of kind of bringing this idea of an event portal to life. And what does that actually mean? And what does it look like? Uh, now, what I always like to do in these presentations is try and keep the plugs, the, the kind of advertisements to an absolute minimum. So what I've done for this one is I've created my patented shameless plugometer. Um, and so I'm going to look out for that. I'm going to increment that every time I give you a shameless plug. OK, so it kind of warns me that I need to do it. It warns you that that's what I'm going to do. So hopefully it'll add a little bit of extra fun. All right. OK, let's get into the meat of it then. So APIs are great. We all know that. Why are they great? Well, one of the reasons is simplicity. Right? They're well understood. They're easy to code to, for, and against. And one of the key points is they're ubiquitous. They're kind of everywhere. Now, at Solis, we fully recognize this, and we actually use them ourselves. So what I've got up on screen here is an example of our management and monitoring API. It's called Temp. Um, it's easy to create documentation. There's the documentation screen that's automatically generated. Um, these the, the ways we can interact with APIs is so ubiquitous that you can even use um, Linux um, or even Mac OS uh, command line tools like curl. They're the simplest possible interaction you can imagine. And we've got lots of great tooling to go with it. So this window here is an example of Postman, right? Really easy to pick up tool that you can use to interact with your APIs, do testing. And that leads me on to one of the reasons why APIs are great. Because they're ubiquitous, that means that there's a large amount of tooling available. So here's some examples. We've got Postman. We can do interact with our APIs. We can do testing. Um, we've got things like Microsoft uh, Anypoint Exchange, right, which enables us to build up uh, a kind of marketplace of connectors and APIs that we can interact with. One of the real benefits of APIs has been this idea of adding metrics to them, instrumenting them, so we can monetize them. And there's a, an example from Axway there. So lots of different tools, lots of different approaches that have helped really build APIs from a kind of techie interaction point into a real business tool. Um, Digging into some of that tooling, if we look into some of the tools that are available to us, there are these developer portals that enable us to, easy to easily develop and manage our APIs. We have testing tools that can bring up mocks, that can fuzz our APIs, that kind of thing. 
And these tools bring us onto this idea of lifestyle, uh, life cycle, sorry, not lifestyle, that's a different conversation, life cycle management and governance. Uh, and what these tools is really bring APIs again from that kind of techie interaction point of view to a full business enterprise suite um, that's able to bring benefits to our enterprise as a whole, not just on the technical side. But, so, let's talk about some of the disadvantages of APIs. Polling. Hopefully that picture there is familiar but not too familiar. If you've ever had a long car journey with children, right, you're probably used to that idea of, you know, are we there yet? How many more miles? I like to draw on that example because it's kind of a trivial but a good example of polling. Right? The children in the back of our car, aren't we aware of the length of our journey and how long we've got to go? And the only source of information is us as parents, as drivers in the front, right? So they're constantly asking us, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And the problem with that is that, well, you're probably aware in the car, right? It's wasting their time and yours. But if you apply that to the API idea, it's very similar, right? As a client, by having to issue these periodic requests, that's consuming resources we could be using elsewhere. On the server side, it's also consuming resources. Another problem with that is that we have to scale our server side for that. And we have to scale for peaks. We don't know how often that polling might occur on the client side. So we have to kind of guard band things and build out more heavily than maybe we need to. Now, it turns out we do have some answers on the front end side of things. Uh, a simplest one is probably a webhook, right? So child asks, are we there yet? And parent answers, no, and I will tell you when we are, and kind of flips up an imaginary chauffeur screen between the front and the back of the car, uh, and then when they are there, brings down the chauffeur screen and says, well, we are there yet. Probably not the best example of parenting, but it kind of illustrates the point. Um, another approach to this, of course, is, is a technology like GraphQL. GraphQL is a subscription feature where you can ask, are we there yet, but within a subscription, and GraphQL will say, no, I'll tell you when we are, and you'll hold that connection open. So that's quite interesting. It brings in, in, in this idea of a subscription, and we'll talk a bit, a little bit more about that later. Okay, so that's fine on the front end, but what about uh, back end servicing our API? So I'm gonna start getting into this use case now. So there's particular use cases in supply chain, in logistics, this example is a manufacturing company. They have raw materials and parts coming in through their supply chain, often being shipped on containers. Um, they need to understand when those containers, <coughs> excuse me, are going to arrive uh, to ensure that they get to their manufacturing plant at the other end. And so the kind of interaction looks like an API gateway is querying these kind of IoT portals with it fronted by an API to say, you know, is vessel X on time so that you can schedule these container shipments and then talks to a transport manager system. So in this case, uh, uh, Oracle's OTM. Um, and then further on from that, if there are disruptions to the supply chain, maybe we need to go to our ERP system to reschedule our production orders. And that's fine, that works very well. It's an excellent example of API led design. But the problem is that the team uh, we were talking to as part of this project wanted a dashboard so that the management team could easily understand the exact state of the manufacturing supply chain. Where are my containers? What's delayed? Which particular factory is gonna face the biggest disruption to its, its production lines as uh, a, a good turn up late to be manufactured? Um, so that's what the kind of dashboard looked like. It uses a mapping API to plot vessel po positions. You can click on vessels, understand where they are, whether they're on time, that sort of thing. So if you think about how we're going to craft this together, well, what happens? Do we call out to these other APIs? How does this work? Well, we could use a very common API technique composition. Um, and what we would do there is we would have to have our existing APIs kind of calling out um, to our dashboard API. So we compose our dashboard API with our other APIs. Well, the problems with that are, well, response times. All of a sudden, we've created a chain of execution, for instance, in our container API over here. It has to call the dashboard API, call the Oracle API. But another key point here is that the dashboard team has to request changes to all of these APIs. And that's, in this particular case, three different teams. We've got the containers team, the transport team, the ERT, ERP team. And if you think about how quickly we want to put, put this dashboard together, that's a real problem. 
that's not really agile because we've got to get onto everybody else's work step, uh, work uh, books, agree changes, that kind of thing. So you can see this was kind of w the point at which they got they were really inhibited. So let's look at a different way, the event-driven one. What we do here is rather than compose chains of APIs, we say, let's take our container API here. We say, whenever something happens of interest, you're going to just emit an event that describes that chains of interest. And uh, rather than worry about where that needs to go to, you're going to send it to an event broker, shameless plug number one, this is Solicitor's Plus, plus event broker. And that's it, that's all you're responsible for. Whenever you see something of interest, just admit it as an event, as a message um, to the event broker, and your job is done. That gives you decoupling. Because then, as we bring our dashboard API into use, we don't have to talk to any of the other APIs. All we have to do is subscribe, listen to these events of interest. Great. That gives us real agility, because it means from our um, Dashboard API point of view, we're just listening into existing events. And as you can imagine, as we kind of refine this whole business process here, we might want to add analytics, um, for instance, to help determine where uh, the most, what causes containers to be late. Well, in this case, it's simply a matter of adding another listener into our broker. So that gives us that little agility moving forward. Uh, and the results of this with this particular customer is it took them two weeks to implement this dashboard. Um, and as a result of the extra supply chain visibility they're getting, they're projecting savings of greater than 10 million euros um, in the next year. Shameless plug number two, um, we've actually got some detailed webinar, uh, webinars on this subject. Um, there's the link there. So apologies, last minute uh, presentation. So the slides are a bit rough, but yeah, if you want to know the full architectural details about this, there's that link there. And we also have our, uh, uh, another webinar that describes this whole supply chain digital transformation in more details. So there we go. Hopefully that's kind of helped you understand how event driven can help. Um, just some comments on events, what they are and the kind of structure of them is, one of the important points about events is they are time sensitive. And there's a nice Gartner slide over here that really illustrates that in detail. Um, a key point of events really that people struggle to get hold of is that it's the publisher, the emitter of the event that really owns that event. It owns the data structure, the schema of the event, because it's the emitter that's going to fill that out. And really, it says, therefore, it's down to the emitter um, around all of the governance side of things. Events need to be brokered. You need an event broker. One of the things that a broker does is distribute the events to all of the downstream stages. Because remember, we're no longer relying on the API to decide which parts of the API should be chained together. We're relying on the event broker to determine who's listening. And the event broker also does persistence for you. So if an event can't be delivered now, it's the broker that takes that responsibility of making sure that that event isn't lost. And that's a key point because it's all about enabling the emitter of the event to give it to the broker and then say, hands off, I'm done, I'm decoupled, I'm going to move on. Now, a side benefit of that persistence idea and this delivery to multiple destinations, which I don't really have time to get into today, unfortunately, um, but it's kind of summarized in this slide down here. It gives you the ability to deliver a single event to multiple downstream systems at the same time. That means we can parallelize our event processing so that our back, uh, our back end systems are processing them in parallel and that gives much better response times. It gives much more optimal compute. And if you look at this slide here, you can imagine this kind of chain here of executions is our API chain that we're then handing off to our event broker here out uh, for that kind of parallel execution, that deferred execution. We refer to this as kind of breaking the chain of execution. So hopefully here you can see some of the benefits of events and event-driven architectures. What this leads us to in Solace is this idea of an event-driven backend, but an API-fronted enterprise architecture. So if you look on the left-hand side here, um, we've got our traditional API with an API gateway communicating, as we saw earlier, um, usually there's a te uh, technology JMS, if you're aware of that, um, that enables us to do this very easily. Um, that enables us to kind of slide event driven into an uh, API fronted um, design methodology. Now, one of the things that event brokers can do is talk to each other 
whether they're in different geographical locations or whether they're on premise or on cloud. And this idea of talk, them talking to each other leads this idea to leads this to an, this idea of an event mesh, which is where the brokers are meshed together so that um, say an API gateway here receives something of interest in our transport train here, we can send that over the event mesh to our factory, for instance. So when our ERP system decides to update the production orders, the factory can be notified and a factory API called over here to update um, the factory operating systems. But, have you noticed there's always a but? Um, you may have heard this, but event-driven is hard. And I'm not going to contradict that. It is not the simplest of technologies to move to. In Solus, we do have methodologies to help you that. But there is a good reason why it's hard. Um, kind of up to now, there's been no place where we can discover what event streams we already have. Um, we don't know why an event stream exists. It's just there. How do we access it? Has it changed? Um, What's in the payload? What's in the event? What's the schema? Who should have access to it? Am I allowed? And so on and so forth. But about revision control, what about impacts of changes? Um, and so if you're a fan of Gartner, they've kind of summarized it this. Essentially, there's no productivity tooling up till now around about events. And shameless plug number three, that's what we've done at Solace. That's what I'm kind of uh, the, the synthesis of my talk today is we've created this thing called Pubsub Plus Event Portal. And the idea really uh, is we've looked at API management platforms and, and really looked at those as uh, examples of best practice because they, you know, they have been so successful, they are so good. And they do answer these what, why, when, where questions around um, APIs and kind of use that for event streams. Um, and this is what Event Portal looks like. This is our designer tool. So we saw earlier an API designer. This is an event designer. It enables us to capture the applications that are consuming and emitting events. We can look at the events themselves in detail. So in this particular case, it's the transport manager. We've got um, a, a transport gateway here, something like OTM. We've got our marine traffic services, so things like clear metal, emitting events like container loaded, container unloaded, customs notified, that kind of thing. And then these are feeding off to uh, an SAP ERP in this particular case. So they might be saying, uh, I've had to update a production order, that kind of thing. We've got our uh, a tracking portal down here that feeds our dashboard. You can see that at all it's doing very simply is just listening to particular events of interest. Moving on, uh, one of the things we talked about was the idea of a, an API catalog. So how can I find if an API is already there um, that I could use? We've got the same here for events. You can drill into the details of events. It gives you details like what is the schema, who created the events, some documentation around it. Um, you can automatically generate some uh, documentation as a result that enables your users to look into and reuse events. And last but not least, we've got this runtime probe idea where um, if you don't have a greenfield deployment and you need to find out what events are flowing across your runtime infrastructure, you can deploy this uh, runtime probe, uh, which is discovery, and that will uh, look at all the events flowing across your infrastructure, gives you some nice way of visualizing um, what events are there in terms of how busy they are and how many uh, events follow the particular structure, and it can populate the event catalog too. So again, this time it's not a but, uh, however, we've only really just started on this journey at Solace. So kind of my call to action here is, um, have a look at your API landscape. So have a look at your chains of execution. Is the critical path that, that's necessary to get a response to the user? Do you have anything in there that isn't absolutely essential for that response? Can it be made asynchronous? Uh, what about response times? Are you always getting the best user experience from that? Have a look at your design approach and the results it's generating. Are you always meeting your goals? We've seen cases where customers have had to um, reject the idea of, of creating a project because um, the amount of churn, the amount of design change, the amount of API changes required to implement it was simply too great for the benefits. Are you seeing that? 
If so, maybe you could get rid of that idea of composition and bring an event uh, event-based API into things. And so really the idea there is to look at some of these um, kind of facets of API-led design and imagine whether an event-based approach would fit. It won't fit in all cases, but in many, we see in many larger enterprises where they're getting this kind of conglomeration of, of composition that it really, it, an event-driven approach really could bring considerable benefits. And if you design, def, uh, decide that you could benefit from an uh, event-driven approach, please feel free to talk to us. Or alternatively, if you don't want to talk to us, you can sign up for free, you can get a cloud plan, you can download the broker, and you can also try our um, event portal for free. And that's plug number three. That should actually be plug number four there. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, we're really keen to talk to the API um, community to help uh, develop what we're doing here. And that is almost exactly 20 minutes. So thank you very much for your time. Apologies that this maybe was slightly different from the session you were uh, expecting yeah. today. No, no, I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for uh, replacing at the last minute. Uh, that was very interesting. And, uh, and this is really something that people creating APIs should worry about uh, because a, a synchronous API is not always the same, the, the good response to uh, your needs of interconnections. Uh, there is a question from Zoltan Simon. Uh, exciting journey. Are you supporting async API specification in your product? Funnily enough, yes. There is a button in Event Portal that enables you to generate async API. And actually, we're on the AC, async API uh, committee. We're sponsors of that uh, initiative. So yeah, we're, we're very much signed up to that. You can actually generate, if you're used to Spring Boot at all, I don't know. Um, but if you use Spring Boot and Spring Streams, uh, we have code generators that enable you to generate code directly, which is great for developers, right? Because you, you get a bunch of code, and all you have to do is write your business logic in. So yes, async API. That, that was the question. I the first question I, I wanted to ask. If <laughs> not ask is, uh, I will have time for a little bit of discussion uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, sending and receiving events from a protocol and technology point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, um, is, w w would there be a difference between how you uh, manage sending events to? someone who is inside your organization and mm -hmm. someone who is outside your organization, like partner or customers and so on? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, I think that's an evolving space. So if you'd asked me that question a couple of years ago, the answer would be probably you wouldn't be sending events directly across organizational boundaries. Um, there's one exception to that. That's the finance industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you if you look at a stock ticker web page, for instance, you're actually getting events there, the mediated events that are coming directly from the exchange. Right, they might be delayed, or you might be subject to certain uh, restrictions. What we're seeing increasingly now is is the market kind of bifurcating. You're getting people either using kind of PaaS or iPaaS solutions, things like Del Boomi. Um, they're using they could be using API gateways, or actually we're increasingly seeing people signing up to this idea of exchanging events. So an example of that would be SAP. SAP are, in, are on an event-driven journey. Um, and we're starting to see customers looking to consume events from, say, um, HANA Cloud, as an example. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of protocol do this solution use? Are they HTTP-based or something um, different? Yeah, so kind of where we are at Solace is we don't want protocols and things to get in the way. Mm -hmm. A protocol is just a way of packaging up an event that you can understand it. Mm -hmm. So we try to understand as many protocols as possible in an agnostic manner. Um, if you look at uh, certainly people like SAP, uh, well, I, I'm talking on behalf of SAP here, or probably mm -hmm. shouldn't be, but I imagine they're looking at things like whether they should do it through um, HTTP yeah. or whether they can communicate directly using um, uh, event-based protocols. So things like JMS, for instance, or AMQP, or even MQTT. Uh, if you look at the IoT space, for instance, when you're talking to things like factory machinery, often the protocol there you use is MQTT. Um, really, what we do at Solace is we try to talk all of those protocols, okay. right? But you don't have to worry about it. Thank you very much, Tom. We're on time. 
so Lovely. thank you again. Uh, that was not uh, easy to do. Uh, this talk it was not completely ready, but really, really good. And now. Uh,